Imagine looking up at the night sky and knowing that an old acquaintance is on the way, a visitor who returns from time to time, crossing the solar system as if keeping a promise made centuries ago. Halley's Comet is that traveler. It appears, captivates entire generations, and vanishes toward the deep cold, only to return decades later. Maybe your grandparents pointed it out in 1986. Maybe you yourself are counting the years until you see it again. That's how Halley connects us, a thread of light running through lives, eras, and memories. Comets are frozen leftovers from the formation of the solar system. Think of them as time capsules, a mix of dust, rock, and ice that preserves primitive materials. Some are just a few kilometers across, others span dozens. It was a medium-sized comet, 67P slash churyumov Gerasimenko, that made history in 2014 when Europe's Rosetta probe reached it, orbited it, and even tried to land a module on its surface. That encounter produced unprecedented images and an intriguing discovery. 67P's water has a different signature from Earth's water, a sign that not all the ice in the solar system tells the same story. With comets, we learn as much about yesterday as we do about tomorrow, but none of them inhabits our imagination quite like Halley. It's the comet that taught astronomers to see a pattern where people once saw only apparitions. Until the 17th century, comets were omens, or unpredictable visitors. The English astronomer Edmund Halley changed the game by comparing accounts from 1531, 1607, and 1682. Instead of three separate phenomena, he saw the same body returning at regular intervals, and he went further. He calculated its orbit and predicted the comet would be back in 1758. Halley didn't live to see his prediction come true, but the confirmation put his name in the history books and on the comet itself. 1P slash Halley, 1 for the first cataloged periodic comet, P for periodic, the letter used for comets that complete their trips around the sun in under 200 years. Periodicity is the key to its allure. On average, Halley goes around the sun every 76 years. Put like that, it sounds simple, but its path is anything but a stretched ellipse covering about 12.2 billion kilometers per orbit, plunging from deep space into the inner solar system and back out to where the sun is just a pale star. That, on average, matters too. The planet's gravity subtly tweaks the comet's orbit, shortening or lengthening the interval. Between 1835 and 1910, for example, it was 75 years. In other eras, like between 451 and 530, the gap stretched to 79. It's the same traveler, but with a slightly elastic clock. If we look further back, we find Halley much earlier. The first recorded observation appears in 239 BCE in Chinese chronicles. Jump then to 837 CE, when the comet passed extraordinarily close, something like 5 million kilometers from Earth, reaching an estimated apparent magnitude of negative 3.5, almost like Venus at its brightest moments. Moving forward in time, 1910 brought another grand showing. The comet came to about 22 million kilometers and was photographed for the first time, kicking off its career as a celestial object captured on film. On the human scale, 1986 is the year that left the deepest mark. On February 9th, Halley made its most recent close pass, and, for the first time, humanity was ready to meet it. A true Halley Armada was assembled, Probes from different countries set out to surround it, study its composition, and, if possible, peek at its nucleus. The Soviet-French Vega-1 and Vega-2 missions got close enough to capture images of the nucleus. Japan sent the Suisse and Sakigake probes, adding precious data on the coma and tail. And Europe, with the Giotto spacecraft, managed to photograph Halley's nucleus in unprecedented detail as it was already moving away from the sun. That image, processed from raw data, revealed a dark, irregular object approximately 15 by 8 kilometers. A block of dirty ice, yes, but of hypnotic complexity. Darkness, in fact, is one of Halley's signatures. It's among the least reflective objects in the solar system. The technical term is low albedo. In other words, its surface absorbs most of the light it receives and reflects very little. That surprises anyone who imagines comets as bright snowballs. In practice, the comet's showy brilliance in the sky doesn't come from the nucleus but from the clouds of gas and dust it releases when the sun begins to heat its surface. Near perihelion, the point closest to the sun, jets of ejected material form the coma and tails we see with the naked eye. It's during this warmer season that Halley becomes a spectacle. That very activity is the price of the show. With each approach to the sun, layers of material peel off the surface. Estimates vary. 
Some speak of an average loss of 1 to 3 meters per orbit. Others record shedding equivalent to layers up to 6 meters deep in more active regions. That's not trivial. Over many orbits, the comet changes, thins, evolves. And if the erosion goes too far, it can lose all its ice, stop producing tails, and end up as a dark, rocky body that in some cases crumbles into dust. For a typical periodic comet, the lifespan ceiling hovers around a thousand passages. In Halley's case, it's calculated that it has been on its current orbit for at least 16,000 years. A veteran that, as far as our records show, hasn't displayed obvious signs of retirement. And when it isn't here, where is it? On December 8, 2023, well beyond Neptune's orbit, about 35 astronomical units from the Sun, Halley reached its minimum orbital speed. It's as if it had made a U-turn on the track, a dynamic inflection point that officially marks the start of its journey back to the inner solar system. From there, the comet begins to pick up speed again, drawn by the sun like a stone thrown in an arc, returning toward the center of the gravitational field. That out-and-back path sets the cadence of a celestial clock that neither runs fast nor slow. It simply responds to the cosmos's subtle nudges. There's a luminous side effect to this dance. The meteors we pencil into our calendars, the debris Halley sheds with each perihelion remains strewn along its orbital trail. When Earth crosses that trail, tiny particles slam into our atmosphere at insane speeds and burn up, tracing brief, beautiful streaks. Two annual showers come literally from Halley's tail, the Eta Aquarids in May and the Orionids in October. It's as if, even in its absence, the comet sent postcards of light to remind us it's on the way. From the standpoint of celestial mechanics, Little about Halley is constant besides its return. The 76-year average is a useful yardstick, but not a micrometer. The gravity of the giant planets, especially when it crosses orbital planes, can tug on its path and tweak the period a bit. A technical detail, yes, but one with direct implications for our experience. For some generations, the gap between two apparitions was 75 years. For others, 79. The math behind that variation explains why, even knowing it will return, we always need to refine the forecasts, and when it does return, the show depends on geometry. In 1986, for example, the configuration wasn't ideal for brightness. The comet appeared more subdued than many had hoped. For 2061, the story tends to be different. Earth and Halley will be on the same side of the Sun, a setup that favors a more intense display. Studies estimate it could reach an apparent magnitude around negative 0.3. In plain terms, it will be bright enough to see easily with the naked eye more striking than in 1986, and worthy of entire nights of watching. If you plan to be around, mark it in your heart and on your calendar. 2061 is promising. It's curious to think that while we wait, the comet keeps silently doing what it has always done. And down here, we collect stories. In 1910, a photograph opened the age of the image. In 1986, an international fleet opened the age of the visit. Vega 1, Vega 2, Suisse, Sakigake, Giotto, each pride loose a secret. The dark, irregular nucleus took on shape. The jet that blew dust and gas was measured. The particles collected told us what a comet is made of. And at the same time, Rosetta, decades later with a different target, 67P, showed that comets are plural on the inside. One comet's water doesn't necessarily speak for them all. Add it all up and a broader narrative emerges. Comets guard the ingredients of the beginning and, when they pass near the sun, offer open-air samples in the sky. Speaking of beginnings, Halley's story isn't only scientific, it's human. Since 239 BC, someone has noted its passage, someone has pointed a finger, someone has felt fear, someone has written poetry. In 837, crowds must have seen it shining like a Venus with a tail. In 1910, the camera learned to follow the light. In 1986, children and adults gathered on balconies and in backyards. And if you were there, maybe you remember who stood beside you. A comet that appears every 76 years isn't just an astronomical event. It's a time marker in people's lives. It's worth remembering that even with generous brightness, comets have moods. What we see depends on the sun's angle, Earth's position, how much material is available to sublimate, and how active the nucleus is during that perihelion. Halley has a reputation for delivering on expectations, but it isn't a spotlight under our control. In 2061, everything points to a spectacle. Even so, every eye will find a different Halley. Lower on the horizon for some, higher for others. Clearer on dry nights, more subdued under light pollution. 
Part of the magic is that uncertainty that gets us out of the house to look. While that day doesn't arrive, we can follow the signs. The Eta Aquariids in May are a good excuse to wake up early and look east before dawn. The Orionids in October call for clear nights and patience. In both cases, they're fragments of Halley streaking through the atmosphere. Small, yet capable of reminding us of a grand origin. And if you like numbers, here are some to keep. An average period of 76 years, an orbital circumference of about 12.2 billion kilometers, historical variations from 75 to 79 years, a closest recorded approach of approximately 5 million kilometers in 837, an estimated brightness for 2061 around magnitude negative 0.3, not bad for a 15 by 8 kilometer object that reflects so little sunlight. If the question is, why does it matter? The answer may be twofold. Scientifically, Halley helped establish the notion of periodic comets, and with it, the idea that these bodies follow laws and orbits, not whims. Culturally, it's a story that crosses generations. The grandparent who saw it, the parent who heard about it, the grandchild who will see it again. In a world that changes quickly, it's comforting to think that a traveler with at least 16,000 years of orbital mileage is still punctual in its own way, even if it's subject to planetary gravitational nudges. When Halley returns, much down here will have changed. Maybe brighter cities, better telescopes, phone cameras more powerful than those of 1986. Even so, the gesture will be the same. Step outside, look up, search for a trace of light, and recognize something that surpasses us. If you get the chance, mark that date with someone you love. The comet leaves, but the memory stays. And deep down, it's as if it carried human stories in its tail. I want to know, did you see Halley in 1986? Where were you? With whom? And what did you feel? Tell us in the comments. Those memories deserve to be recorded. I was only going to be born four years after its passage, but I hope to be here for the next encounter. If this video helped you understand why the most famous comet in history is more than just a spectacle, share it with a friend who loves the universe and leave your like. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.